everyone welcome to the dad level podcast uh we got a shorter episode this week because we were just kind of busy with our schedule but we hope you enjoy the topics um it'll be me david and alex so um let's begin so uh this week we're going to talk about uh man i'm i'm botching this what, what, what got us what got us you know into gaming right where yeah. where we kind of kicked it off started off right at, at the yeah. idea um i guess on that on, on that note then i'll kick it off like i guess the last couple episodes i want to make sure that i'm not giving a wrong impression of, of my brain right i wasn't in some kind of like uh you know uh locked down place where there was like nothing fun to be had no it was you know it was just a lot of the nerd stuff my my family just wasn't into but my grandfather was really big into computers so like that whole trope of the the old people not understanding technology never really made sense to me but that's really where the majority of my gaming started i would go to my grandfather's uh, my grandparents house and he'd bust out his floppy disks you know insert them into the computer flip the little switch so it would lock it and hold it in there have to run the dos prompts and then bring up like wolfenstein 3d that was that was the game that i played ad nauseum as a kid he had the little booklet that had the breakdown of like all the levels every little wall where you go up and just hold space bar right just tracking along all the walls and open up the secret areas and go through get all that stuff it was so bad that in fact in my first grade uh year i'm sorry yeah when i was in the first grade we had to like do little doodles right in, in a notebook and the teacher would give you little stickers like great job whatever and i remembered years later i found that notebook and i would i drew the entire hud for like Wolfenstein with the little face and the guns and all that stuff. And it was just like a hallway with dead bodies and pools of blood everywhere. And up at the top was a little bitty happy sticker of some little kitten, like great job and stuff like that. And it's like, yeah, that, that, that was, that was really where I kicked off. Like um, we had, we had a Nintendo an original int Nintendo early on and my mom played the crap out of Tetris on that, but I always sucked at Tetris and, then we had the adventure of Link and there was a basketball game that I had to go Google last night because I destroyed my brother at it constantly. And I couldn't remember what it was. It was double dribble for the NES. Uh, and yeah. I played the crap out of that with my brother. And then he and I would get so angry at each other in that and Contra as well. Cause in Contra, like the very first level there's, you can get the scatter gun. It's like on a little platform, very low early in the level. Whoever got that just got the most points in the first level period because you just killed everything with it, right? And so me and my brother were so competitive because we just, we had to be the one with the high score at the end of that first level, right? So it was like jumping down. We'd be rushing to get the scatter gun. Whoever got it first, bam, got it. The other one would jump up, boom, hit the reset button on the NES, be like, nope, we're doing this again. So I don't think I ever saw past like level two on Contra just because of that. And eventually, because all that fighting, my parents took it and gave it to one of our cousins. So then it was just all about like going over to friends' houses and playing on their Sega Genesis's and stuff like that. But for me, the the one I always remember that really stuck with me for the longest time was Wolfenstein. Just playing the crap out of Wolfenstein. I've killed more Nazis than like it, it's it, it was great. It was good times. That's awesome. Yeah, my my answer is kind of like a three pronged approach. So. Um, one was the arcade. Like when I first saw in, in, you know, when I say arcade, it was almost like, you know, in the pizza parlor, that one cabinet or, you know, inside the grocery store, we were just talking about Sellers Brothers on, on Edgebrook. You know, we would, I'd ride my bike over there on highway three on this little really busy road, people going 60 miles an hour. And I'm like, no, I got to get to street fighter, you know? And so uh, the arcade was one thing. Um, console gaming, you know, I had all my friends up and down our street. One person had the Genesis, one person had Master System or NES or Atari. And so we would all go to each other's houses and play, you know, whatever game was the game of that week. And so um, it there was like a social aspect to it for me. I never really played games by myself. It was always with friends, like a two player game with my brother. Um, Contra, that was a big one, David. I, I completely agree with you. You know, you take the top, I take the bottom, you go left, I go right. Streets of Rage, like those types of games, those beat em up side scrollers. That was me and my brother 24 7. Uh, as far as like PC gaming, I don't know. I, I played Wolfenstein, I played a few of the other ones, but Hexen and Heretic like sucked me in. I was like, I was like glued into the screen. Uh, I've met my fingers were like stuck on those arrow keys. Like you kind of had like that, you know, that, that pattern stuck on your fingers. But 
Yeah, and gaming just came at me all at once, and it was all about the social aspect for me. It was just an easy way to connect with friends. We could we could joke about it, we could laugh about it, and we could just have fun. And, you know, it was just a part of like our social structure. That's really how I got into gaming. Yeah, for me, my dad got me into gaming. Um, you know, being somebody that literally was on my mom's hip when we were in the arcades, you know, when my dad was playing, it was funny. He would, he, he'll tell stories about the fact that like he'd be grooving on a game with his, uh, his Walkman on and stuff. And my, uh, my mom would go over there. Hey, I need, I need some change, <laughs> you know, and he's still working off of his first quarter, but uh, yeah, no. And then I think the, we would always go to the arcade, super track tilt, all that stuff. I mean, I remember, um going to um uh, one of the comic book shops with my dad um would always frequently and um basically uh anytime something new came out we would go do that but uh one of the biggest things that got me hooked into video games was the nes um my uncle roger got us a nintendo and actually he got it for my sister and amber will tell you that or she used to remind me that that nintendo that you have used to be mine <laughs> so we would uh yeah i would i was playing that constantly and then i remember going through most of the consoles like um after that were usually either mine or my dad's so but uh yeah i just have fond memories i mean playing contra of course i played the heck out of that i remember actually we would play it because the apartments we were in and then we would go outside with our fake guns and pretend like we're playing contra going yes. up the steps of apartments and just shooting at fake things <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the actually one of my fondest memories was uh about it was meeting jeff my best friend uh, one of my oldest friends um when he moved in uh there was this weird thing about the the way the cables were ran in the house and um the TVs and stuff, I guess we had. So I don't remember if it was him or me. I was playing a game or he was playing a game. I think she, I think it was me playing the game. And he said he turned his TV to a certain channel and he was picking up the game downstairs. <laughs> really weird. And uh, I think that was one of the things that got us started talking. I mean, uh, other than the fact that, you know, um, we would see each other all the time and we would talk, but um, gaming was one of the things that really connected us um and his brother it's funny thinking about uh other friends right because like growing up outside of you know playing games on my grandfather's computer it really was the majority of over at friends houses right and i was always the smallest of all my friends so anytime that we had to change out a system right it was me having to like cram back behind like the tv and all that to unscrew the little connection for whatever it was and get the other one and screwed onto that little connection to be able to, to run it. But, but yeah, it was, you know, I, I think the favorite, my favorite uh, moment playing friends I can think of was whenever we found a glitch in the old uh, South park um, little first person shooter game on the N64. Cause you had a gun that shot a cow and the cow would fly in the air and it would find you no matter what, and just lodge itself on top of your head and suffocate you over time. There's nothing you could do about it. But we found out that uh, instead of grenades in there, you threw Terrence and Philip dolls that would explode and create this like, my, you know, this fart miasma, right? And uh, if you hit someone with a cow and the cow was still on their head and you immediately hit them with a Terrence and Philip doll, the entire cow would turn brown. It would stop killing you, but you wouldn't be able to see anything. And so you'd just be running around with this big old cow stuck on your head, completely blind to the rest of the game. It was, it was great. Uh, and that was that was some of the best parts, right, of of a lot of those those games, because like we we played fighters back in the day, but we all sucked horribly at them. It was just one of those things where like everybody learned how to do Scorpion Spear or Sub Zero's Ice Ball, and that was it. Like you, no one knew how to do anything else, right? It's like we played Shotos, and that was it. We all could throw Hotokins and do Tornado Kicks, but absolutely nobody touched Guile because we didn't understand how to do the Sonic Boom. That was tough. Yeah. <laughs> charge characters man charge characters are if if, if you can play them you know more power to you but i just i don't have the patience 
you know, yeah. you're talking about getting those connections. When, you, when you're talking about the RF adapter, it made me think of that pain point. When you're trying to screw it on, you're like, 10 minutes, why won't this thing screw on? And then you realize that little prong is bent. It drove me crazy. And then going to friends' houses, I think the funniest thing to me was like, you know, I, I would have two SNES controllers. Somebody else would have one. And then another person on three blocks away would have the fourth controller. We'd all come together. And then this other guy had the multi-tap. And then like just the amount of friends it took so that you could play a four-player game was just crazy. I, 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 you want to talk about collaboration. That was it. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was it? Um, there was, I mean, I remember the times that we would go to your house, Alex, and we were playing Bomberman on the Saturday. Oh. <laughs> Dude with the multi-tap and everything. Yep, and we figured out how to, how to hook up two multi-taps to get 12 people on one screen. And that was just, that's just crazy. Yeah, that, that one. And then, um, what was it? I know that there was times where like, I remember when Red Faction, the first one came out for PS2 and Andrew brought it over and me and him were playing multiplayer on that. And I got to the point where, cause we would turn the bots on and everything. And then, uh, what was it? We would, uh, we would just play this one level well you know there was those explosive packs well because of the explosive environments i was sitting there making like freaking holes in the walls and i would just throw these packs out so when person comes by i would detonate it so i was just getting these kills by <laughs> <Can't> <laughs> remote, <it>. remote detonation. <laughs> and then um i remember like when we would uh what was it we'd always come over to my house for play tekken or tekken tag Yep. Your house was all about Tekken. Yeah. Um, and then I remember, what was it? Uh, when the bouncer came out, me, Andrew, and our friend Franklin were playing that and until we beat it and we started just unlocking everything else. I mean, the game was visually great. I mean, the story was okay, but it was just fun beat em up for what it was. I think the funniest, to me, the funniest multiplayer experience is when you're, you're at your friend's house on a small TV and you're playing four, four split screen, like GoldenEye. And then when we got to like Call of Duty and stuff, the funniest thing was my friend Ravi, you know, he would get so upset. He's like, how do you keep finding me? It wasn't me, it was somebody else. He kept saying, how does this guy keep finding me? I don't understand it. How does he find me? Then he finally figured out that he was just looking at his screen because we're all looking at the same TV, right? Then he, he dubbed the name Screen Peeper. And he's like, look, Screen Peeper, I have had enough of you. And there was this meme that went out for a while. I don't know if you, you, you guys have seen it, but it's a, it's a group of kids playing like GoldenEye and they have like a cardboard box <laughs> it's like taped to the TV. So the, and the person's head is under the box and so they can't see what's going on on top. Uh, yeah. I'm like, genius. We should have had that back then. <laughs> well, that's part of the fun, man. Um, yeah, like I remember when we did our first tournament and uh we were at steven's house planning it out and we were all playing third strike on the dreamcast and like there was it was me you jose steven jason and we're just sitting there and jose and steven were sitting there doing the whole pairing i think we were what they had turned off the time so all it was was them just fighting each other pairing i'm like guys come on hurry up so we can all play you know i mean it was almost an hour of yeah. me pairing back and forth and i was like yeah. is it our turn yet what's happening here yeah and then um but i think i think the one of the fondest memories i have is when we did the tournament yeah you know um that was pretty cool just setting it up we had like the Jason was kind of the doorman at the place we rented for the event. And Is that the one we rented the clubhouse for, the apartment yeah. clubhouse. Mm -hmm. Didn't we call it an expo? Was it <laughs> or the expo came later? I think the expo, well, we were doing the expos in between, but I think it was the first time that we started doing that little mini uh mini little comic uh with news updates and about video games that people were people were buying from us. <laughs> oh, we took this so seriously back then. But uh, no, what was it? We, uh, we had a tournament of tech and tag. Uh, third strike. Third strike. It was four games. And then the last, um, so we had a bracket system where you would play through the, each of the four games and then we would do one final 
uh, final round. Actually, I think it was no, it was just three games. We did two, so it's Third Strike and the last one was a non-fighting game. Oh, Soul Calibur, I think it was. Was it Soul Calibur? Oh, they're all fighting games. Okay. Yeah, that was all fighting games. So it was yeah, Third Strike, uh, Soul Calibur, and then Tekken Tag was the last one. And then we gave away that import uh, the modded PS2. Oh yeah. <laughs> or, yeah, no, it was a modded PS1. It was uh, and then uh, uh, I want you to I want you to take note of modded systems so we can just do a whole episode. Yeah, and yeah. we can talk about the golden. <laughs> the golden. Oh my god, the golden. golden <laughs> oh man. For 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 Andrew, the shout out of the golden Dreamcast that was being swapped around all through all of us. But uh, no, I just man, we had so many crazy things we did. I remember there was one time that it was me, uh, Andrew, his friend Bobby. Um, I think Jonathan was there. It was like it was like four of us that were sitting there trying to do the Rolling Cradle of Death for uh, King and Tekken and Tag, so we could do it in the arcade when we would go play. <laughs> and there was like, a guy at Super Track that did it all the time, and he would just be sitting at the machine yeah. for like an hour. Yeah, yeah, that Rolling Cradle of Death was it. For those who don't know, it's this move that King does where he just grapples you and rolls you all over the place and it's like impossible to escape. So yeah, yeah look it up. It's kind of crazy. Um, yeah, that and um, man, what else did we do that was crazy? Um, we used to do a lot of tournaments at the houses though, especially when we started doing the expos. Um, yeah, for anybody who doesn't know, so we used to do these gatherings at each of our houses where we would kind of like celebrate games and then we would you know uh some of us would have stuff that we would would have to sell so we'd also do trading because you know back then it was like you know a lot of times you were buying the games yourself you know you're um i know that i would only ever get games for christmas and my birthday or and maybe a rare special occasion so like unless i wanted to trade it into you know game crazy or funko land i had to you know, maybe trade it with my friend. And uh, yeah, I remember we had a couple of those events and we did a couple of uh, like Bomberman tournaments and um, what else did we do, man? There was like so much that like... It was kind of like a mini E3. Like we would, we would like, if somebody got a brand new release game, then we'd all meet there and play that new release. Uh, we'd do some buy, sell and trading, right? Uh, yeah. Somebody have a table set up with you know, toys and other things, even anime or manga or, you know, DVDs. It was all kinds of, it was like Craigslist, but in person, right? Like Craigslist for gamers, but in person. And it was, it was awesome. I mean, we did them what, every month, almost every month. And then mm -hmm. we'd make flyers for them. We'd, we'd hand them out at school and, you know, quite a few people showed up. It was, it was actually yeah, I remember, yeah. I remember um, what was it? The second tournament we did, the one that Steven fully, um, we even actually had some of the guys come from uh, some of the tournament circuits that were in Houston um, to go show up to the, the event. Um, I just don't remember what game we played. Um, and then- and It got so big at one point, we had competing tournaments. You know, yeah. like Steven and I had competing tournaments. You put one out, we had our own little brands around them and it was, it was fun. It was so much fun. Man, uh, yeah. Uh, but I think that's the birth of uh, Akuma's Cave was the thing for us, but that's a whole other episode. Um, we're going to try to definitely get some people that were originally part of that to, to join in the discussion for that one, because that event, I mean, the things that we used to do for, for Akuma's Cave was was great. Um, there's a lot of fond memories for that. But uh, David, any any other shenanigans for you? I think you're, I don't know if you're paused or you're pondering a thought. He got frozen the pondering. <laughs> No, oh, there we go. There you go. Sorry, man. Yeah, it's my bad. I, I I got called on business for a second. Um, so uh, no, I uh, it, you know the majority of of my friends that I was around, right there, there weren't a whole lot that I knew that that really like. We never got enough people together to have big tournaments like that. Like the most multiplayer, like big multiplayer experiences I had was whenever I got into high school. And uh, there was, what was the name of the place? I think it was called Tabs. It was down the street from South Houston. It was a, like a, a PC gaming deal where 
you could all get together. And that was when I first discovered Battlefield 1942 for the first time. And man, like we would all just get over there, you know, you pay for your hour or two, whatever. And we'd all get together and sit down and, and just, you know, play the crap out of Battlefield and really, really knock it out. Like fighting games wasn't really a big, wasn't really a big thing with, with all the guys I was around again, we were all horrible, filthy, casual scrubs when it came to fighting games, right? Like, uh, I know the first big fighting game that I, I got into was uh, Soul Calibur, right? Like, you know, back in the day with the Sega and Nintendo and all that, there was Street Fighter, there was, you know, uh, 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 Mortal Kombat, there was Killer Instinct, stuff like that, right? And I just, it never really quite gelled really well with me because I'm a, whore, I'm, I'm just a god awful button masher, right? If I, if I push something, I want something to happen. So I'm just mashing buttons and it's like, you know, Ryu throws a punch and a punch and the kind of a kick. And it's like, okay, I learned how to do a fireball. Then I just spam fireball. And that's all I know how to do, right? Like dragon punch was, was beyond my skill set early on. And, uh, but then I found soul caliber two, right? When soul caliber two came out, all of a sudden everybody and their mother was playing that game. You know, everybody had either the PlayStation one for Hayachi. I, I think only one person I knew actually got the Xbox one. And then my brother had a GameCube at the time. So he just played link. And the, and the bad thing about Link, at least the people that played him, was they always played him in the same way. They would just run at you, and he would do his big baseball swing, and it would just ring out you every single time that you come out. I, out of the gate, just ring at you almost guaranteed. So me and my brother, we, we would get into, like, training mode, and we would pick one of those levels that had a cage to it so you couldn't get ring outs, and we would just fight each other for hours and hours and hours. So anytime that we went over to somebody's house, it turned into, you know, everybody always pick out the ring out, ring out stages because that was the only way they knew how to play. We're like, nah, son, it's my turn to pick the level now. We're we're playing Thunderdome rules at this point. You gotta win, you gotta win legit. And you know, that was the that was the game where I first started kind of getting, you know, strategy and learning, okay, here's inputs, here's how to do combos. Like that's when things really started to gel with me. But that's because I don't know what it was. It was just like that 3D aspect to it really, really worked with me with Soul Calibur. I never really got into Tekken, but that was mainly because the first time I ever played Tekken uh, was against my older cousin. He was he was the video game like master growing up, right? We would go visit my grandparents and we'd go over to my cousin's house and he had like every system and tons of games and he'd be in there just like destroying whatever it was he was playing. And I got into Tekken one time. I don't even remember who I played and he picked, I think, Devil Jin and just just annihilated me like off the map and you know that meme of whole i'm gonna end this whole man's career right well that that was the end of my tekken career i just got in there just i it was no there there was no contest whatsoever i I don't even think i got a punch in and it was just it was done and i'm like you know what i I don't think this is the game for me i'm i'm good but yeah i mean again for for me and, and my friends it was mostly just just filthy casual scrub stuff and fighting games. Then whenever I met Andrew, got into Red Faction 2, he and I used to play the crap out of that. Then he introduced me to SmackDown, and SmackDown opened up a whole another world of possibilities of uh, just all the crazy, because Andrew was a master at just creating people in SmackDown. Like, he would take one look at you, and he's like, give me, give me like five minutes. And he'd get into character creator, and just pop out with the character and you're like dude i don't know how you did that but like that's perfect i love this guy i love his move set yeah he, he make moves for you and everything oh yeah. man i remember when he, he came with that memory card that had all of us in the room and i was like you made a character for all of us and then it had like our nicknames and the, even the moves had like silly things that we would say yeah, yeah that was a creative guy <laughs> yeah andrew, andrew's awesome i came to that what was my, my, I don't remember if it was the uh, PlayStation Smash because I was such a Sony guy. Oh, man. We used, <laughs> um, we used, to, call, we used to call Vince the emotions engine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, there, yeah that, that one story, man, like, um, what was it? Uh, <laughs> they were all like, oh, yeah, the PS2 is not going to come out and they, or it's not going to come out when you think it is. They're going to, you're not going to get one because there was going to be a shortage and I was like, guys don't understand i'm like my name's the first person that they game <laughs> game game crazy so i'm gonna be able to get my pre-order and sure enough i had it and we all had a, a great time when that system came out uh playing um second tag the uh street fighter ex plus 
or no, it was this EX? I can't remember. And then uh, I think we rented like SSX. I think it came out that same time. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, no, um, there's a lot of good stuff on, we need to talk about that. Yeah, whole, whole, ep whole episodes worth of just stuff like that. Yeah, that, that like, like each just one dedicated topic about stuff. And we've kind of almost made this whole episode just about gaming memories in general. Um, so let's just transfer over to the next topic real quick and uh, kind of discuss about how we met our significant others. And I will go first. And, you know, uh, for me, I was playing Final Fantasy XI at the time. So um, for people who don't know, it was an MMO. Um, Square Enix's first uh, venture into that foyer of uh, game types. And um, I actually played that game for a good 10 plus years um me and james were heavily on that game and then so uh how i met anna was kind of interesting so we um went to um so our okay our buddy richard had a meetup together like of all the people were in our guild and uh sure enough like anna was one of the people that showed up there and stuff and it was like we made an instant connection um but it was funny so after that point it was like we were always in the same party playing together and then um one thing led to another and when we met it stayed together so it was like we became the ultimate party and, you know created our own little one so but uh yeah it was um gaming is what brought us together the one thing that's funny though is the connections that our family have um and actually i want to probably do a video on that at some point but um, you know, Anna's grandfather is the first person to, um, open the first comic book shop in Houston and help start the convention scene. Um, you know, so he's got a lot of great memories and I want to do a, uh, interview with him about, you know, all those great memories and stuff. And, you know, not only for preserving him and then, you know, for his kids and stuff, but, you know, um, he was a big influence and for my dad, um, you know, my dad used to go to his comic book shop and then um, knew Roy and knew uh, Roy's memories and the, the different other shops that he had. And, you know, it's funny, um, there's all the other connections too with my wife and us is that, uh, you know, she went to a school that my mom's uh, second husband, um, her family was at. They were, they were teachers and stuff. So, it was just kind of funny how like our worlds were so connected and we just didn't even know it until the moment we met. So it was a, it was a cool experience. Um, like we, we were destined. So at least how I feel about it. So David, Alex. Uh, I mean, I, I can't quite follow that up very well. My, my wife and I got together sheer, surely out of coincidence and miscommunication. Right, we were uh, we met each other in San at San Jack, the community college. We were in a history class together, and you know there had been a lot of small talk here and there, but it wasn't until uh, there was a test that was coming up, and she turned around and asked me if I had an extra pencil, and I was like, yeah, and I tried to give it to her, but she thought that I told her that it was my only pencil, so she refused to take it. And then after class, I ended up like chasing her down the hall and like giving, I was like, no, I, I had an extra pencil here, take it so you could take the rest of your test today. And then uh, it was weirdly enough, just kind of like from that, we started talking more and it just turned into a whole thing where in between classes, we would sit out and talk for like hours and then it just kind of grew on from there. And uh, famously, the, the story that she loves to tell about it is um, uh, she's six years my senior, right? So uh she was she she was feeling kind of awkward about the age difference and she she pulled me into a quiznos and was trying to gently you know let me go let you know let me uh go on my own way and she's like i just she's like it just it just it's you're you're so young and i was like well i'll help you get over that and then just kind of like moved on from there and so yeah now we're we've been going 14 years strong now so yeah it's been it's been a ride but it's been a good one. So, yeah. Awesome. Congratulations to 14 years. Yep. That's incredible. Yeah. So my wife, um, 
we met at work. And so I, I went to a work event. So I worked for uh, Samsung at the time and she was working for AT&T. And we did this like really large scale training event. It was probably about, I would say maybe three to 400 people across Houston uh, that worked for AT&T that went to this one meeting spot. And so they opened the doors and literally like this flood, the sea of people come in. And my wife is like five foot. So, you know, like I'm just like, you know, welcoming people in, saying hi, greeting them. We, my boss and I had a table. And so we we're just going to catch people as they came to the door to talk about our products and, you know, try to give out some freebies or tchotchkes. And then I saw her walk into the door. Like I saw a glimpse of her. And then there was a whole bunch of tall people around her. And I just kept looking because I wanted to have another look. And then I saw her again. And I don't know, like, you know, the old saying, oh, love at first sight, it really was. Like, I just was enamored by her. Just, I don't know, there was just something about her. So I literally just started pushing people out of the way so I could just go straight for it. And I felt, I felt bad because I saw some like friends that I'd worked with, you know, at other stores like, hey, Alexander, like, just get out of here. It was like football, like just dodging them, you know, just so I can see her. And all I wanted to do was know her name and what store she worked at. That was it. What's your name? What store do you work at? So long story short, I ended up going to that store. I kept going to that store often. And from there, the magic just started happening. We started dating and, you know, things, things just blossomed. It was beautiful. And the funny thing is that we never really talked about gaming until, you know, she saw my massive game collection, which, you know, Vince is very familiar with. <laughs> and uh, she, she was like, wow, you really like video games? And I was like, yeah, I, I played quite a bit. And she's like, yeah, I used to play a lot when I was a kid. You know, I play here and there. Um, but she didn't seem like a real gamer, you know, until I actually looked at her phone. She had a lot of like apps and games. Like she played a lot of like phone games. And that's why I really discovered that we, we had the same passion for strategic and puzzle games. So even to this day, we still like compete with puzzle games and that's like our thing. That's our, our niche, but yeah, incredible journey. And we've been married, uh, two years, almost three years. Yep. Nice. Yeah, I've been with Anna for since 2005. So and we married in 2008. So it's been a great oh. journey. Nope. Yeah, it's been a great journey. <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, nah, it's it's fun. Um, we, we get to play games here and there together, uh, Minecraft and stuff, or um, she plays Animal Crossing. So I'll, um, I, was, I would jump on there with her, but I've been too busy with work and stuff. And, um, you know, we do play Mario and stuff, things that she likes. Um, she'll watch me play the stuff I want to play. Um, she's not big on, you know, she likes RPGs. She just doesn't have the time to play a lot of that stuff right now. So, but... Yeah, you know, between going to school and babysitting our son, because you know he's remote learning right now, and then uh, our nephew, you know, so that's a full time job right there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, she um, she would love to be able to just sit down and play video games, but you know, parentally duties get in the way sometimes, so. Yeah. I mean, console gaming is really difficult for us. I mean, my son's seven months old. And so like, as soon as we're sitting together, we're looking at a TV, then he wants attention immediately. Right. And if he's sleeping, we can't, we can maybe get like 15 minutes of gameplay in. So what we found is like this, this is our saving grace. Like if we could find a game that we could play on our phones, you know, like, okay, he's sleeping on me. I can just play the game behind him, you know, or, you know, in some weird angle, just because, it's, it's been like a, a real great alternative to still be able to have fun and play this game, but not like be totally distracted from, you know, spending time with him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's funny. You know, we, uh, my wife, she's not, not kind of like what you're talking about, Alex, right. She's not really big into console games. Never really has been, you know, when she was a kid, play Mario, play like all the traditional stuff that, you know, most people think of, and, you know, whenever I met with her and even, even now, right. The way she plays games is, is like what you're talking about, right. The phone. And I'll give her crap all the time. Cause she'll be like, I want to watch a movie and we'll like turn on the movie. And the whole time she's like playing one of those little things. It's like a match three deal where you're like, you got to combine three little trees that make a little pink tree. And then you got to create three little pink trees. And it 
releases this weird energy that flows over and unlocks another area and all this other stuff. And like, I give her constant grief about that because I'll sit there and look. I'm like, you're not even you're not even paying attention to the movie. Like, yeah, I am. I was like, what what that guy just say? She's like, okay, I wasn't listening right then. It's like, yeah, yeah, okay. But uh, whenever whenever we first got together and and started getting into in, into things, I tried to introduce her to some games. Then I, I made the horrible mistake of originally trying to get her to play Resident Evil Five with me. And the reason why that was a, a mistake is because my wife is absolutely terrified of zombies. Um, but even though she's absolutely terrified of zombies, she won't stop watching things with zombies. Won't stop. I, it just she she likes the concept of zombies, but they absolutely terrify her. So we got into Resident Evil Five and the very beginning of the game. Right, she's never played a game like that before, so she just starts shooting into the roof and then shooting into the ground and just shooting everything except what she needed to shoot in it. And I was like, okay, this maybe isn't a game for you. And I don't remember exactly when it came out in relation to Resident Evil 5, but the first Borderlands game came out. And for whatever reason, that game just jived with the both of us. And she picked Lilith and I picked Mordecai and we just ran, we just blew through that game, right? It was, uh, if we could get a, a, a little bit of time, uh, our kids, thankfully, like she got them on a schedule like quick and both my kids whenever they fall asleep they're like me they are dead to the world like I was over at uh I was actually over at your dad's house Vince and and hanging out with uh your sister and uh Josh and all them and we were playing rock band and like the tv was jacked all the way up right everybody was jamming out to it singing all that stuff and Meanwhile, there's like a bassinet back behind the couch with my son laying in it. And somebody kind of looked over at me and like, David, do we need to do we need to turn this down for the baby? And I walked over to the bassinet, leaned in and was like, hey. And my son was just kind of like. And just immediately went back to sleep. I was like, see, he's fine. Don't worry about it. It's like you, you got to you got to have, you know, vacuum cleaners and stuff going on. And they're good. So. You know, he would take like a mid afternoon nap and he it was guaranteed he was going to be out for an hour. So, man, we just. You know, an hour in games like that, you can't necessarily get a whole lot done, but you, you can get a little bit done. So we just hop in there and tear it apart or we'd stay when Borderlands 2 came up, came out, man, we stayed up all night just carving through that. So like Borderlands has been like our game, right, in terms of console games. Um, outside of that, though, like early on, uh, we started getting into a lot. I started getting into a lot of board games. And so she uh much to her chagrin now because I've got a closet over here just filled with them and she just keeps getting on to me like did you buy another board game I'm like yeah it's for the family we're all going to sit down and it's the third iteration of Zombicide but we're going to play this one a lot more I swear so true well um everyone this is uh, that's going to be the end of the episode we hope you enjoy. Uh, continue the conversation down below. And until next time, have a good one. Bye, everyone. Mm -hmm.